I got sober um, in Providence Hospital. I was um, dying from um, alcohol withdrawals and um, a rare blood infection. And um, <sighs> and a bladder infection. And I barely remember um, being there. I know I was really sick. And I remember um, my friend Dale and my daughter were taking me to the hospital. And um, I kind of remember just a little bit when I woke up and I heard the doctor saying that um, if she makes it through the night, she might have a 50-50 chance of living. And even then, um, she might not ever be able to talk again or um, remember who anybody is. And that's how sick I was. And um, that first year of being sober, um, I think it was the, the biggest test for me. Um, you know, because I credit God for delivering me from um, alcoholism. Um, there was nothing that I could have done to stop myself from drinking. Um, that was my whole being was to be the alcoholic that I became. And so that first year, um, my daughter was pregnant with my first granddaughter. Um, my dad um, was diagnosed with um, cancer, and I relied totally on God for everything that year. Um, I remember uh, I kept praying, Lord, I need to help take care of my family and I don't have anything, um, you know, so I prayed every day, I prayed, I, I prayed that I could uh, find a job, and finally I just said, uh, I, I'm gonna give it all to you because, you know, the, I'm, not, I'm unemployed yet, and um, I need to take care of my family, and so I said, um, since you, you know, you can't help me get a job, so uh, send me money. And so that week and the couple of weeks after that was the most amazing time that I've seen God work answering that prayer that I prayed for money. I was getting checks in the mail from, I had like three checks that I didn't even apply for for um, permanent fund that came, they sent back to me during that week and then um, for years, because of my drinking, I lost custody of my kids, and child support was even sending me money, and it was amazing. I, I just knew then that you know that God has got everything under control, and you know, like um, I was saying, I'm from Nikolai, and I don't know if very many people know where that's at, or. Um, but there's 80 people, maybe, that live there year-round. It's a small village, and, um, you know, maybe it's about 50%. The alcoholism is, like, half now. It used to be 80%. And, anyway, um, my dad passed away in 2017. You know, all those things that I used to be really afraid of that I thought I was going to start drinking again, you know, I was carried through all of those things. And, uh, um, I guess just today, I just feel like um, I need to start sharing about um, what alcoholism took away from me and the life that I have now, and it's totally different. I have um, my mom still, my dad passed away, and so she's got like 30 years of sobriety, and she's my biggest fan. And so 
every day I you know, count my blessings and I have a grandson, a brand new grandson, and when I look at him, I just know that, you know, he's never gonna have to see me, hopefully, you know, pray that he never sees me um, with a hangover or hearing about me doing crazy things like I used to. So I've been working, um, trying to help people for the past 10 years, 10 and a half years or so. Um, I help people to try to get into um, recovery programs. Um, you know, a lot of people get ordered to do things, um, to go to treatment and stuff. So, you know, I set up um, anger management classes or um, AA classes um, as part of my job. And so I'm trying to do the best I can to give back 